you know the book Brave New World? This book. Yes. Um, in it, you have a civilization that is geared entirely towards, well, towards happiness, towards the thing that we all want, according to utilitarianism. Oh, utilitarianism. Quickly, it's this. That we ought to maximize happiness. We ought to make people as happy as they can be. Utilitarianism would love this book. In it, the society is organised so that people are never unhappy. It recognises that, for instance, you need workers, so it breeds people by injecting alcohol into the foetus to make them less intelligent, smaller, so that they enjoy manual work. And then the normal person, well, they are given a whole load of encouragement and education in order to be happy, as well as the miracle drug, Soma. And Soma basically just kind of chills you out when things get a bit much. The society is incredibly controlling, but incredibly happy. That went further than expected. That is not what utilitarianism would actually want in a political system. I want to start by looking at the philosopher John Stuart Mill and Mill's political philosophy. Remember, Mill was one of the founding members of the movement that is utilitarianism, the movement that says that you ought to maximise happiness. Well, Mill also wrote another book, and this other book was called On Liberty. He thought that the principles in his political philosophy book on liberty really did originate from his ethical outlook. Here's why in a nutshell. He thought that the government doesn't know you. So a system that is built entirely around controlling you and making you as happy as possible with drugs like Soma and so on isn't really going to make you happy. His conception of humankind is as essentially free. Here's what Isaiah Berlin wrote about Mill's view on human nature. For Mill, man differs from animals primarily neither as the possessor of reason nor as an inventor of tools and methods, but as a being capable of choice, one who is most himself in choosing and not being chosen for, the rider and not the horse. In other words, the thing that makes humans unique is their ability to choose. And that's the thing, thinks Mill, that will make humans happy. So a system that controls you, that tells you what to do, is never really going to make you happy. And if you're a utilitarian, remember, you're interested in making people happy. So Mill had a radical idea. He thought that in order to make people genuinely happy, you need to govern them in such a way that allows them to do as much as they want without harming other people. This is Mill's harm principle. In essence, it's the idea that we ought to stop people only from doing things that harm other people. As Mill himself put it, the only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilised community against his will is to prevent harm to others. In other words, thinks Mill, the law should be set up in such a way that you should be able to do whatever you want, as long as that thing doesn't harm people other than yourself. So Mill's harm principle, the idea that the law should never stop you from doing something you want to do as long as that thing doesn't harm other people, is the bedrock of what we call liberalism. Now liberalism has been corrupted in the modern time, but liberalism in Victorian England was 
all about liberties. And it was drawn, interestingly, directly from Mill's utilitarianism. It was aimed entirely at making people happy. So, does utilitarianism end in despotism? Does it end in the brave new world? Not necessarily. According to Mill, it ends in a freer, happier society.